Hello, good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Um, it's so great to be here once again with my friend and my brother, Steve Amango. Tonight, we'll be speaking on the topic, leadership and personal finance. Leadership and personal finance, which is, um, you could say leadership and uh, financial discipline. Um, so tonight we're going to be adding value and I hope that um, as many of us tune in, uh, you'll be blessed uh, tonight. Uh, Steve is uh, somebody I, I admire so much. He's, uh, he's been a friend, a brother. We actually attended the same uh, the same primary school um, well steve is off um i'm sure we'll come back in shortly um so but um but before he comes back in i'd just like us to uh prepare to ask as many questions yes he's back on again yeah uh, okay steve you're yeah, welcome back you just went off now yeah so um yeah yeah thanks 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 okay. okay i think it's a network uh yeah issue. it's a network yeah it does it does happen you know but um i'm hoping that tonight we, we can get as much uh traction as possible and mileage um so right so steve you have feel free to share on my, from my page if you go to my page um sorry feel free to share yeah i'm actually on your okay uh i'm on your page okay i'm on your page but um i'm just waiting for the the video to come up um okay. so that at least i can share it with, um, yeah okay i haven't seen it okay awesome amazing okay. i haven't seen it okay but we can go ahead okay Awesome, awesome. So um, I think I'll share the link on your page. On your page. Okay. Uh, yeah, you can share it on my page. Yeah. Yes. Okay. Yes. So Steve, um, please, can you just introduce yourself? Uh, tell us uh, who is Steve Amango. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Um, thanks, thanks, uh, Guki. Um, well, my name is um, Steve Amango, and um, I'm actually I'm from um, a large family. Um, even though I'm not from a polygamous home, I'm from a family of nine, and um, I'm actually I used to be the second to the last born. But right now, I'm the baby of the house. Um, I, as you are aware, I think 2016, December 5, to be precise, I lost my younger brother. Okay. And um, unfortunately, um, October 24th, I also lost my eldest sister. Okay. And then uh, sometime 2010 as well, I lost one of my brothers. So I'm from a family of nine, but uh, right now we're six in my family. So and uh, my dad passed away. Um, that was 1999, right? Okay. Um, so um, like you are aware, Goke, I, I went to University of Lagos, uh, graduated uh, from science, uh, faculty of science, and I actually studied microbiology. So when I graduated, uh, that was 1992, I I actually wanted to travel abroad, okay. but um, I thank God, I didn't take that decision at that time. Okay. And um, I always appreciate my elder ones for giving me the advice to stay behind. And um, I worked in an audit firm for about three years before I started banking in 1997. So it's actually been a very long journey for me. I started banking with uh, Eco International Bank, 
And you know, like I mentioned earlier, before I started banking, I was in an audit firm. So that actually um, made me to be very, very disciplined. Hmm. Um, because while I was in the audit firm, I actually had two elder brothers. Um, one actually trained with KPMG, Pitmarik then. They used to call it Pitmarik Ani Ogunde. And okay. then my other brother trained with Price of House. Um, so they actually, I mean, they were more like my mentor. They guided me. So I was always looking up to them. Okay. And uh, like I told you, I went to a co-international bank. Okay. After I left the audit field. That was where I started my banking career in 1997. Okay. Um, then in 2000, I crossed over to a discount house. I'm sure you remember the, this, the five discount houses that we used to have then. Okay. That was in the early 90s. But I joined 2000. And then okay. I worked in one of the discount house, associated discount house. Uh, I worked there for like um, three years. Yeah. Okay. Then okay. after which I moved to Fidelity Bank. Okay. Uh, so I joined Fidelity Bank as an assistant manager. And after six months, I was promoted to deputy manager. Then, while I was in Fidelity Bank, I was head of currency trading. And um, after spending about three years as well, I moved over to Oceanic Bank. So from Oceanic Bank, I joined the um, Echo Bank. I left Oceanic Bank as an AGM, and I joined the Echo Bank May 9th. 2009 so for me it's actually been a very long journey and um, wow. i've spent about uh, yeah i've uh, sorry i joined i joined the uh, i joined echo bank 2011 yeah okay. because i've spent about nine years there now okay okay so while so whilst i'm in echo bank um I've actually been exposed to a lot of uh, stuff in terms of financial markets. Okay. I was opportune to work in a London office for a while. Okay. And um, right now, I'm a deputy general manager. I've also been on secondment to East Africa, where I was regional treasurer for about two and a half years. Mm -hmm. And uh, even when I left, I actually got an appreciation um a letter of appreciation from the central bank for my contribution wow. to their financial markets wow and it will interest you to know that as we speak i'm actually still in touch with the deputy governor of central bank of kenya wow. cbk wow uh, so for me and um even some of my colleagues in east africa i'm still very much in touch with them wow so for me it's been a very long journey uh currently like i told you i'm a dgm in the bank Okay. I'm head of the proprietary business and also double act as a group manager trading. As okay. you're aware, um, ETI is the parent company of um, Ecobank Nigeria. Okay. We have presence in about uh, 30 countries in Africa. Okay. So ETI is more like the hood code. Okay. Yeah. So I also yeah, I have a dual responsibility. Wow. So wow. for me, really, I mean, the banking, yeah, the banking profession has been very exciting for me. Okay. It's been a very long journey. Okay. And uh, I think I give God the glory. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. I haven't come this far. And then, um, yeah, I think I need to actually thank God for what I've been able to achieve. Amazing. Amazing. Thank amazing. Thank you. Awesome. Yeah. Awesome. So how did yeah. you... And then I also, yeah... yeah yeah. yeah i'm listening okay. so how, how did you get into leadership you know uh, because I, I remember quite well that I was a privilege to um work with you in fidelity bank that's almost 20 years ago now yeah i was in uh you know yeah. I was in the keja branch i was in commercial banking where you were in treasury you know and yeah. uh um you know but i know you shared your journey but i mean in terms of leadership how did you get into leadership was it intentional or you just found yourself you know, in leadership? Uh, well, it's not intention. It's not, um, well, I would say it's intentional in the sense that for you to be a leader, you actually yeah. need to 
um, you need to you need to work towards it. Um, you know, like we always say in this life, no pain, no gain. Mm. You just have to you have to make sure that you work very hard if you really want to get to the top. And then um, it's also very good for you to make sure that you have someone who is like a mentor or a role model. Okay. So that you can actually model your own um, activity or whatever you do in mm -hmm. that uh, direction. You know, you try and model what you feel your role model does, mm -hmm. you know, because that's the only way you can actually say yes, that you have somebody who is up there and you can look up to. Amazing. And you know, like, I remember when I was in Fidelity Bank, my MD then, uh, Mr. Reginald, he will always tell us that, look, for you to succeed in life, um, you must have the four Ds. That is, you must have the drive, you must have the desire, you must have the dexterity, and also you must be very, very determined. Wow. Uh, so yeah, being a leader, it takes a lot, but you just have to, you have to work towards it. It's not actually the fact that maybe you are up there in terms of grades doesn't really make you a leader. Mm. Because when you talk about leadership, right? Uh, a leader is someone who people actually look up to. A leader is someone who must have a vision. A leader mm. is someone who must have integrity. Okay. A leader is someone who must be able to inspire people, mm. right? Um, so I think for me, that is how I actually got into leadership because in the banking profession, your integrity is mm. very, very important. Mm. You must also have vision of where mm. you're going mm. and you should be able to always inspire your colleagues. Mm. I'm sure a lot of people, I mean, we all know the difference between a boss and a leader. You mm. can, the fact that you're a boss doesn't mean that you're a leader, mm. right? Because a leader inspires, whereas a boss, a boss is somebody who just uh, ensure that things get done. It mm. doesn't really, the, the boss might not necessarily show you how to. Mm. The boss will always say, look, I want this. But a leader will say, let's do it like this. Mm. You understand? A leader leads, mm. but a boss just gives you instruction. Yeah. You, you understand? Mm. So for me, um, the getting to this leadership position is something mm. that uh, is something that um, I was able to achieve through mm. hard work, dedication, determination, dexterity. Mm. And like I told you earlier, I actually have role models, people mm. that I look up to. Wow. And I also think that as a leader, mm. you also need to be very, very humble. Humility mm. is humility doesn't mean that you're weak. Mm. right it doesn't mean that you're weak yeah yeah humility just simply means that you actually you 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 can you can accommodate people maybe mm. when they add their own opinion right mm. uh, so i think a leader also has to be very very humble it's mm. it's something that is very very important yeah if you are not humble in this life you you even if you get to the top you may not really lasts mm. uh, because when you're up there it's lonely at the top there mm. and then um, only when people are able to reach out to you mm. that's when you actually hear the truth yeah mm. Mm. so Steve, for uh, me as a leader uh, yeah you, sh you should be able to yeah you should be able to be reachable people should be able to reach out to you mm. and you must be very very humble mm. yeah wow you are saying this uh you know, with a sense of uh, humility as well, because I remember uh, an instance about 18 years ago, I uh, I just left the yeah. bank, you know, Fidelity Bank. I just left, uh, retired, you know, <laughs> into entrepreneurship. And I came retired, to the bank. Retired, but not hired. <laughs> yes. So I had a proposal, you know, which I brought yeah. to the bank then. And uh, you were in the bank and... Uh, I think I wanted to print, uh, but I, I I was asked to yes. you know make some corrections, and I can never forget that day. You know, yeah. you, you went above and beyond, 
In fact, you tried to help me print. Your system was not, your printer was not working. You battled and manipulated and almost an hour. And I kept on looking at you. I mean, why is why is this young man? You know, not a, you are not as young as <laughs> you are still young now. But then I was wondering, why, why are you so determined, you know, to help me out? You know, um, and I went away with a very huge impression of yourself. You know, I thank God that 18 years on, you are still as humble as uh, as you were then. But what, what gives you this, uh, you know, the quality of humility? How, you know, how were you able to pick up this, this, this quality, yeah? Okay, well, you see, for me, like I always tell my colleagues, um, everything in life really has to do with your upbringing. Um, my, my, my parents, uh, I come from a family, a very humble family. So, and, um, my parents, they always preach humility to us. And for me, that has really shaped my behavior, the way I relate with people, even in the office, I really don't, I don't look down on anybody because mm -hmm. I believe that, I mean, at the end of the day, we're all equal you know, in the eye of uh, our almighty God. So I don't see any reason why one should be, you know, uh, proud or arrogant or whatever. Um, humility is very, very, it's something that I mm. cherish very much. And, mm. you know, like I told you, maybe because of the way I was brought up. Mm. Um, I mean, that's just the way I am. Wow. You know, wow. I think it has to do with my upbringing. Yeah, wow. it has to do with wow. my upbringing. Wow. Yeah. Wow. Awesome. Yeah. Now, let's dive, uh, do a deep dive into why we're here tonight. Now, what's the relationship yeah. between leadership and financial discipline? Relationship between what? Leadership and financial discipline. Leadership and what? Financial, financial discipline, yeah. Okay, leadership and financial discipline. Yeah. Um, for me, when you talk about leadership and financial discipline, I think um, it has a direct correlation. Now, why am I saying this? Um, for you to be financially disciplined, right? You should be able to do what you should be able to. Um, I'm sure you're familiar with. You know when we talk about goal setting. Yeah. You should be able to. You should be able to set your goals um, the way you really want things to work out. Um, just the same thing as a leader. Mm. As a leader, you must have an objective. You must know where you're going, right? And you know, like people always say. If you fail to plan, that means you are planning to fail. Mm. Uh, so for the relationship between leadership and financial management yeah. um, is actually is a direct correlation. Uh, most of the things or most of the qualities of a leader are things that actually dovetail into financial management. You know, like I mentioned, discipline is very, very key. If you want to, if you want to achieve financial freedom, you must be very, very disciplined. Disciplined mm. in terms of how you spend, mm. right? Um, you must also have a goal. Then you must be able to set your budget. The same thing for a leader. If you're a leader, for example, now in the banking industry, when you say someone, you know, like I mentioned earlier, you can be you can be a boss, but not necessarily a leader, right? Yeah. All, all leaders are bosses, but not all bosses are leaders. Okay. At least from the perspective of most subordinates. Yeah. You understand? So for me, as a leader, of course, you have your goal for the team. Yeah. Right? 
So you have to set your goal. Then in terms of financial management, too, you must be able to set your goal and you must be disciplined. Hmm. Then another thing is, you know, there's a saying that people do what you expect, not what you expect. Expect, yes. And what gets measured, yes, what gets measured gets hmm. done. Improved, yes. Right? Now, for financial management, you should have a way of tracking or monitoring your expenses, hmm. the way you spend. Yeah, so that you know how to take corrective actions. You will know when you are overspending. But if you don't document all these things, you have issues. Hmm. The same thing for a leader. Now, when you have a leader, a leader should be able to track what the team members are doing. You should be able to track their performance, how well they are doing. Now, anybody who is a laggard, you should be able to call that person, have a discussion with the person. So for me, you know, when you talk about leadership, when you talk about financial management, it actually has a direct correlation. Hmm. Um, if you are not if you are not a good leader, you might have issues with your own financial management because leadership is all about being disciplined. Leadership is all about having integrity. When it's okay, this is what you want to do. You should be able to do it. Hmm. Then leadership is all about you know setting setting the tone for your team members and also. Um, in terms of um, monitoring performance mm. as a leader, it's something that you also need to be able to do. Then you must be very, very focused. Yeah. Wow. Wow. So wow. when you look at financial, when you talk about financial management, mm. you have to really be very, very focused in terms of what you do. You mm. shouldn't be an impulse, uh, what you call an impulse spender. Hmm. Yeah, you should be able to know the difference between your need and your wants, hmm. right? In our elementary economics, we all know that our needs and wants are not the same hmm. thing. Yeah. So we should know things that are priority. We should know things that maybe we'll talk about that later. We should know things that when you spend, uh, there's a there's a difference between an expense and an assets. Hmm. And there's also a difference between a earning assets and a non-earning assets. Hmm. So those are the things that you really have to look at in terms of financial management, wow. right? You wow. should be able to understand cash flow. You should be able to hmm. understand expenses. You should be able hmm. to understand what earning and non-earning assets are, Okay. right? If okay. you have one billion cash, if you have one billion cash, right? Mm. is a non-earning asset. If you have 1 billion cash in your savings account, you earn interest on it, right? Well, it's the same money. So one is non-earning, the other one is the earning assets, mm. right? So, I mean, those are the things that you really have to understand. So when mm. you're talking about leadership, financial management, it has a direct relation i think that's the way i can explain it i don't know what wow. your own thoughts are well i mean you are you are you are you are you, are, you know on spot on the spot i mean because i feel that um if you are not able to manage your finances well it can expose yeah. you to certain uh challenges uh if you are not able okay. to not just your own finance but also the finance that has been put in your custody uh if you mismanage it yeah. you can lose your leadership very fast so uh, it requires a lot of discipline. Yeah. You know, if somebody says this money, you know, you should have it in your custody and you end up spending that money and, you know, uh, misappropriating it, uh, you find that in a lot of times, not just in uh, the banking sector, but in any, any field, uh, that kind of leader is uh, likely to lose his leadership. Now, what are some of the ways yeah. a leader can improve on financial discipline or financial management? What are some of the ways a leader can do what? Improve on financial management. 
financial management. Yeah, I think, um, like I mentioned earlier, um, Guki, the only way that you can improve your financial management is for you to, you should be able to, you should be able to set your goals um, appropriately. You should be able to, you should have a budget, really. You should have a budget and then uh, you should also, you should be able to like uh, have what you call a contingency fund accounts. Contingency in the sense that um, just in case of an emergency, right? You should have an account where you put a certain amount of money in case of an emergency. Then also in terms of, uh, uh, what is it called now? You should be able to, you should be able to know when to pay off maybe debts that are very, very expensive. Then you should be able to save. We all know that, I mean, most of us, we, we say we pay tithes. Um, so if you're paying tight to your almighty, you should also be able to have that discipline to say, okay, every month I should be able to save a certain percentage of my take home pay, maybe 10%, yeah. right? Then you should also be able to plan towards your retirement. So I think for me, and then um, like I mentioned earlier, you just ensure that you don't spend, you don't spend on impulse, okay? Then you also need to keep track of what you spend. So if you're able to do some of these things, you actually improve on your financial management. And you know, like I also mentioned earlier, um, you need to, you need to document even the things that you spend your money on. So that at least you be, should be able to reflect and ask yourself whether you've actually made the right uh, spending. Um, let me let me just maybe let me just say something. You know, I was talking about cash flow, expenses, and then uh, what you call assets and then uh, also liability. Yeah. Um, when you talk about cash, when you talk about cash flow, cash flow in the sense that what are the things that actually gives you income, right? Then your expenses those things that you spend your money on and don't necessarily generate revenue for you, then you should be able to look at those assets, those things that maybe when you spend your money, when you, when you spend, or let, let me use the word invest, when you invest in those assets, they will be generating revenue for you and be increasing your cash flow. Okay. For instance, now, I remember those days that you always laugh at me that me, I always stock put market. my money in the equities markets. Yes. Yeah. The stock market. Uh, okay, I remember very well. <laughs> um, you know, when you when you invest your money in stock markets, maybe you do money markets, you also do uh, things like euro bonds, uh, Nigerian treasury bills, and then um, also the uh, the Nigerian FGN bonds. Although the yields are very very low now yeah by the end of the day every six months for the bond you'll still get your coupon and when you when you invest in those kind of class of assets your cash flow will actually improve mm. right but when you spend when you spend on things that will not generate additional revenue to you mm. it's an issue mm. right so you need to be able to identify those things that will give you additional source of revenue and make sure that you try as much as possible to avoid expenses that are inevitable. Hmm. So I think for me that's uh, because a lot of people spend on things that they don't really need. Hmm. People spend on things that, okay, let me give you an example. Even if you should buy a brand new, let's say you buy a now, I can tell you that the moment you are driving that car out of um, out of uh, the dealer's yeah. Uh, yeah. Uh, showroom Premise. or whatever, yeah, the moment you drive that car out, the value depreciates almost immediately. Wow! If you want to sell that same car in the next, let's say, three or six months, 
you will find out that maybe you have probably lost about 30 percent of the value yeah. of that car yeah right so you need to for me those kind of expenses you don't really need it mm. right but if you invest the same amount of money let's say in real estate or maybe you put it in uh, maybe fixed income right or something that will generate additional revenue for you find out yeah. that you're actually better off mm. right so you need to you need to be able to bifurcate things that are necessary and mm. urgent from wow. things that are necessary but not urgent mm. and there are some things that you don't really need you shouldn't mm. be buying things on impulse mm. or maybe you are spending just to impress people and all that mm. and if you watch the lifestyle of most of these uh, most of these uh, rich people you find mm. out that what they actually spend that maybe some people also want to emulate them and all that you find out that yeah. what they spend is actually like uh what you call just the leftover of the the excess uh, investment they have and all that mm. so you have to you should be able to know thyself yeah you shouldn't spend on impulse and you mm. should know things that you should be able to differentiate things that are very very necessary from those mm. things that are really not necessary amazing. for you to spend your money on amazing amazing yeah. For those who yeah. are just joining us or watching us, or I watch us in the replay, I've been speaking to Steve Amangbo, my dear friend, and uh, he's uh, Sorry? somebody that I'm just trying to do a recap, you know, and tell the people that, you know, who are joining us that I've been speaking to Steve Amangbo. I will be talking on, on financial discipline and uh, being a leader. Sorry, and, uh, okay, your voice, your voice is breaking. Okay. I can't hear you very well. Yeah. Okay, I think it's a network. Okay. Now, yeah. now, what are the Go ahead. what are the consequences of a leader not being financially prudent? Sorry. A leader not being financially prudent. What's the a consequence? leader not being financially prudent? <laughs> A leader that is not financially prudent, um, I think. How do I how do I respond to that? For me, um, it will be that will be a disaster. Really, um, it's not just a leader. I, I think anybody that is not financially prudent will always have issues because what that means is that that person is not is not disciplined at all. The person is not disciplined and you see, when you are not disciplined hmm. it will be very very difficult for you to actually make it in life hmm. um let's let's even look at let's even let's even set the leadership stuff aside if you look at most of our maybe sportsmen and uh, maybe some of our guys in the entertainment industry you'll find out that those ones that have maybe gone bankrupt, even in the US, if you look at I mean, some of these people in the entertainment industry, or maybe um, those in other professions that have gone bankrupt, you find out that the problem they have is actually lack of discipline. Hmm. So, you know, that word discipline is, is, is very, 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 very germane. I mean, it's very, very key. You just have to, if you're not, if, if you're not disciplined, you always run into problems. You run into problems. So I think I don't know what your own take is. So for me, I think discipline is just a key word mm -hmm. uh, because I mean the consequences is far is far reaching. You have issues at the end of the day, even paying meeting your obligations mm -hmm. because you must have spent your money on things that are not important, mm -hmm. and you must have also spent your money on things that are not generating cash flow mm. for you. Um, I'm sure you know, there was this case of, uh, I don't know who the, I don't know who the footballer is. Uh, there was a case of a Nigerian footballer that people claimed that when he was at the top of his career, that he bought a private jet or something. I don't know how true that is, but I can tell you that that private jet must have cost him a lot of money in terms of even maintaining it and all that.
Mm. So for me, um, it's not just about the consequence of a leader not being financially prudent. I mm. think it's something that we all must um, ensure that you know we have that we imbibe that discipline culture to be able to manage our finance mm -hmm. yeah i don't know what your own take is but that's just the way that's the way i see it awesome 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 well i think you you've uh, touched on quite a number of uh, areas you know but what i can take away from what you're saying is that we have to be disciplined we have to uh, have integrity we also have to have savings we have to have the culture of uh budgeting uh you know yeah having a, a you know and set goals for ourselves and um just make yeah. it a lifestyle um you know you've yeah. also told us that you know that you know we should have any assets you know not just uh yeah you know yeah um you have money in savings uh you know apart from your tights yeah and uh also you yeah. have you can invest in government bonds you can invest in the mutual funds yeah. and those things would help you uh, going forward um now as we begin to round up uh do you have a few words even for those who are much younger because uh you find that sorry i said do you have a few words of encouragement for those who are young that might be listening to us the youth sorry okay i can't hear you i said do you have um sort of like um, an advice for the youth for who the youth youth younger people advice for who the youth youth yes do i have what advice any form of advice for the youth advice for who the youth youth younger people Okay, okay, the younger people, yeah. Okay, um, I think my my own advice for my own advice for the younger generation, you know, uh, well, for us, uh, okay, we are the we are we are not part of the Sorosuke generation. <laughs> Our own generation is uh, it's okay off your mic or whatever. Uh, but what I want to say is this: I think for the younger generation um they need to they need to be very very focused and uh, they need to understand that in this life you know like i said earlier no pain no gain you can't you can't there's no there's no uh, there's no way you can get crash your way to success right Every successful leader has a story to tell. Mm. You just have to make sure that you work very hard. Mm. You have to be very, very focused. Uh, you need to be very, very humble. And also, we all need to be very prayerful mm. uh, because there's really nothing you do in this life. If you don't have that God's favor, mm. you will never make it. But what I want to say is um, that word discipline is very, very important. Mm. Uh, the youths of nowadays, they need to understand that um, it's, not, it's, not, uh, it's not how far, but it's actually how well. Mm. Um, if you say you want to make quick money, you'll be surprised the way that quick money will disappear. And I always believe that I've been in banking for how many years now? Since 1997, and that's about 23 years. I've never faced this banking career. Uh, when you when you make when you make quick money in a very funny manner, you'll be surprised at the end of the day. You will not even have peace of mind. Mm -hmm. So my own advice is for them to just take things easy. There are so many ways you can achieve financial freedom without doing something that you know will bring your family name 
to disrepute and all that. Um, Bokeya Yoruba, that, that actually speaks to what I'm talking about. The Yorubas will always tell you, you need to know the family you come from. And I'm also aware that um, a tradition, sorry, I'm, I'm not Yoruba, but I love the Yoruba proverbs and their way of life. The Yorubas will never respect you, no matter how much you have, if they know that the source of your wealth is questionable. I'm sure you know what I'm talking about. Yeah. So I, I mean, that's just my own advice to the youth. I think they need to they need to just take things easy and ensure that they work very they work very hard and be very very focused. And they shouldn't uh, they shouldn't try to make money in a very funny manner. And we know a lot of things that is happening in Lagos. You see a lot of boys; they are into so many funny things. Uh, they don't care; they just want to make that money. But I always say to them, I mean, that's not the way to go. At the end of the day, when you when you die, people will only remember you for the good deeds for your. Wow! Wow! I think the network uh, has been amazing, amazing. Talking to uh, Steve Amangbo, my brother and my friend. We've been talking on fin about financial uh, discipline and being a leader. And he shared quite a number of nuggets. Uh, he was just talking to the youth and telling the youth that they need to be very patient. And, uh, you know, a good name is better than all the, uh, you know, uh, jewels in the world. And um, he's, he's a living example of what it is to be humble. Uh, someone who is, uh, you know, committed and very passionate about what it does. And um, tonight has been um, a beautiful session with my friend and my brother, Steve uh, Amangbo. So I want to believe that on this note, uh, it's been um, nice, you know, engaging, you know, and sharing on leadership and financial discipline. So until next time, I want to say thank you for joining us and um, have uh, a very wonderful Sunday evening. Thank you and God bless.